Now to take a look at uh, COVID-19 management in Trinidad and Tobago is Dr. Ogonna Okeke, a consultant physician joining us. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon to the viewing audience. Thank you very much for joining us. Kindly give us a sense of the demography of uh, Trinidad and Tobago so we can better appreciate what challenges COVID um, might be, of course, um, uh, causing over there. Yeah, um, Trinidad and Tobago is a, a twin island state nation um, just off the coast of South America, Venezuela. Um, Roughly, Trinidad has a population of roughly 1.3 million people, and Tobago, the smallest sister island, has about uh, 65,000 people. So it's a relatively small island. Um, about 42, 43% um, are people of African origin, that is, uh, people who were brought here during the slave trade. So they are um, our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. And another 42% are um, uh, East Indian heritage descent, uh, people who came as indentured labor in the 1700s, 1800s. And uh, the remaining 10 to 20% are of mixed, uh, of other races, um, merchants, Europeans, uh, people from the Persian region, Syrians, and of course the Chinese. Um, so that's uh, pr pretty much the size of uh, the population. It's um, a country that relies both on uh, natural gas and oil, which it's rich in, yeah. and uh, also tourism, uh, culture, cannibal, and that sort of thing. What, what strategy has been adopted so far in the fight against the pandemic? Um, Trinidad and Tobago has been quite uh, excellent. In fact, uh, probably one of the leading people, uh, nations in terms of fighting uh, um, the COVID pandemic. Um, like the rest of the world, everyone was amazed. Um, here, seeing the news from China um, from late December to early January of this uh, new virus, SARS-2, which um, was overwhelming, where China was building hospitals in less than two weeks. Um, so we had started to look to see for WHO guidelines. And when I say we, I mean the government of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm a healthcare worker, so I was naturally interested and as a human being. Uh, so um, testing um, of um, people coming through the sea ports and airports was the first initial um, process because there's no direct flight except from the US or from the UK and uh, parts of South America. So it meant that any new cases, any new people coming in, probably with COVID, would have to pass through the airports or seaports. Uh, so testing, scanning at the airports was started. Initially, by the middle of March, we got about one case. And then by March 23rd, we had gotten about eight cases. And then we had to, a cruise ship, which was docked off one of the islands that had about 60-something Trinidad and Tobago nationals that wanted to come home. And they were brought back and quarantined. And out of 60 people, 40, 41 people tested positive. The day after that, the, the government closed all sea borders and said Trinidad and Tobago was no longer, um, you know, sealed up from the outside world. So no new people were allowed into the country at the time. The hospital systems were modified to have what they call a parallel healthcare system. So in other words, they had a hostel set aside for purely COVID okay. admissions yeah. because they were also seeing what was happening in other parts of the world where um, people were coming to the hospital and infecting also the other people who were not COVID that were coming into the place. Okay, So that's be because by of, itself. Because of uh, the, the, the time that we have, let, let's also, you know, quickly uh, go into other things quickly. Well, what would you say, yeah. you know, is the future looking like for Trinidad and Tobago, seeing as um, the pandemic doesn't seem to, you know, be backing down in the near future? Um, first of all, uh, Trinidad and Tobago is in a bubble. So right now, we're probably living in, um, we're, we're thanking God for that we just have, um, we've done about 4,000, um, 5,701 tests, of which we got a total of 133 positive and um, only eight deaths. And we haven't had any significant transmission during that time. So right now, um, everyone is wearing face masks, observing social distancing and, um, um, you know, washing hands and so on. So right now, um, the only things that haven't been open are the schools, but the churches, the, the uh, businesses, workplaces have been opened and we have not had any cases for close to two months. So our big worry is when the borders open, but now the whole society has been geared into um, understanding what COVID is about through education, through the press. 
there's been social distancing everywhere people go. There's a mask. In fact, I have my own mask here right now, which I'm just going to put on, um, so that people have been taught to help um, protect themselves. So the future is that we're going to have to live in a world with COVID. Yeah. We understand that, but we've been successful in minimizing it, stopping community spread, okay. having testing, and we're prepared to... Um, Okay. We're in a better position to deal with this. All right. Um, we really enjoyed this conversation with you. Um, thank you so much for being a part of our news. And uh, stay safe um, all the way in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And say hello to my brothers and sisters in Nigeria.